Today we're looking at Bacon's Rebellion. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So when we talk about Bacon's Rebellion, we're not referring to an uprising of delicious breakfast food against those of us consuming it. Rather, we're talking about a rebellion that took place in Virginia a hundred years before the American Revolution. This rebellion would have an unintended outcome that would be terrible and long-lasting. In order to understand the rebellion, we have to look back and recall how Virginia was founded at Jamestown and that the colonists there began growing tobacco, which required a lot of labor. Indentured servants were the main labor, and if you recall, indentured servants were people who worked for a master for a certain period of time, usually seven years, and in exchange, the plantation owner would pay their passage to America. Beginning in 1618, the Virginia Company of London began offering head rights to anyone that came to Vir the Virginia colony. Now, hopefully you're asking yourself, what is a head right? A head right was the offer to any colonist, man, woman, or child that could pay their own passage to America, and they would receive 50 acres of land. This was a great offer, and many Englishmen were eager to take up the Virginia Company on this because there was little land in England available. But here's what happened. Wealthy plantation owners who were paying the passage for indentured servants to come over here would take the indentured servants' head rights as soon as they arrived in America. So plantation owners could basically build plantations overnight. Say a plantation owner paid for a family of a father, mother, and two children, that would equal 200 acres of land they would get. Problem was indentured servants' contracts would run out, and eventually they would be free from being under the plantation owners, and you can guess what they wanted when their contract was done. They wanted their land. And so, William Berkeley had been the governor of the Virginia colony for many years, and in, 16, in the 1640s, William Berkeley had been the governor over the Virginia colony for many years. And in the 1640s, he had made a deal with area Native American tribes that gave him a large piece of land, which he basically divvied up among some of his friends. And in exchange for this land, Berkeley promised to limit the movement of colonists westward and stop them from taking Native American lands to the west in Virginia. Now enter Nathaniel Bacon. In 1674, he arrived in America and purchased a plantation near Jamestown. Bacon came from a prestigious family in England and was related to Sir Francis Bacon, who was a well-known statesman back in England. Bacon was quickly put on Governor Berkeley's council, but very soon they began to butt heads because Berkeley and him disagreed over the treatment of Native Americans. Nathaniel Bacon argued for moving further west and taking Native American land, while Berkeley abided by the deal he had made with Native Americans years before. So basically, Bacon was upset that Berkeley would not allow him and other settlers to attack Native Americans and take their land. So, you know, not a very just cause, but nonetheless, Bacon began to gain more followers. Many of the former indentured servants who were getting out of their contracts and had no land of their own became supporters of Bacon and his plan to get more land pushing to the west in Virginia. Bacon also argued that the safety of the colonists was in jeopardy because of Berkeley's policies. Well, you can probably guess what happened. Some colonists began to attempt to settle into this western frontier of Virginia, and they end up being attacked by Native Americans. And that was all it took for Bacon and his followers to start the rebellion. In early 1676, Bacon organized about 60 colonists and they began conducting their own raids of Native American villages, killing men, women, and children. After these raids, the House of Burgesses, remember the first representative body in America, met and passed what was known as Bacon Laws that took some power away from Governor Berkeley and also gave voting rights to men who didn't own land. And they hoped that this would be enough to satisfy Bacon and his growing rebellion. But it was not. Bacon and about 500 followers marched on Jamestown and demanded that Bacon be given permission to attack Native Americans with his new little army. Governor Berkeley refused as Bacon and Berkeley openly argued in the streets of Jamestown. Members of the House of Burgesses were threatened and then agreed to Bacon's demands. Bacon com continued his raids on Native American villages throughout the late summer of 1676 as Governor Berkeley organized his own militia to put down the rebellion. So Bacon and Berkeley's forces began to clash, and on September 19, 1676, Bacon and his militia marched on Jamestown, burning it to the ground and forcing Governor Berkeley to abandon the capital and run. And now Bacon was in charge, but within weeks, Nathaniel Bacon would die of dysentery on October 26, and the rebellion would begin to fall apart after his death. Berkeley's forces began to fight back, and shortly after, the entire rebellion was over, and Berkeley was back in control, and 23 of the leaders of the rebellion were rounded up and executed. And not long after that, Governor Berkeley was actually taken out of control by King Charles II, who feared a civil war breaking out in the colonies. 
But now you might be asking yourself, why is this rebellion even important in history? Berkeley remained in power. Bacon didn't achieve what he hoped to achieve. But here's the terrible unintended outcome of the rebellion. Plantation owners became very fearful of using indentured servants for labor. Most of the rebels fighting were former indentured servants wanting land. And so plantation owners wanted a labor force that would never be out of their contracts and would never get land. Hence, you can guess what we see. A significant rise in enslaved Africans being forced to work on these plantations. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.